Hello there and welcome to my channel. I'm Christian and you're watching a dev story. There are several programming techniques and algorithms that allow you to solve a problem in an easier way. A couple of these techniques are recursion and dynamic programming. Let's talk a little bit about them. So basically recursion is a function that is part of the definition, right? Like uh, think about factorial or Fibonacci that are the most common uh, recursion function. In factorial, number n is the factorial of n multiplied by n minus 1 factorial. And right in Fibonacci, for example, is a function based on the result of the previous two computations of Fibonacci. So it's a program that can call itself. And it's also called a divide and conquer. And many algorithms also use this approach to solve problems. Recursion is a good fit when you have a problem that can be solved by solving two or more smaller problems. Then we have dynamic programming. Basically, dynamic programming can be seen as an optimization technique that can be used together with recursion. It's basically catching the results of subproblems. And there are two conditions to be met in order to know if a problem is a good fit for using dynamic programming. Basically, one is uh, having an optimal superstructure. That means that the optimal solution can be constructed for finding the optimal solutions of its subproblems and that they are overlapping subproblems. So for example, merge sort is not a good candidate for dynamic programming because you have two different sets of uh, problems to solve. It's not, you're not uh, having overlapping subproblems. I will now show you a little bit of an example using uh, the most common uh, example for recursion that is uh, Fibonacci. So here we see the definition of the Fibonacci function, right? So Fibonacci of a number x would be if x is less than 2, it would be 1. If x is uh, equal or larger than 2, then it would be Fibonacci of x minus 1 plus Fibonacci of x minus 2. Let's say we want to calculate Fibonacci of 7. If you see down the 3, we will see that we need to calculate Fibonacci of 6 and Fibonacci of 5, which is getting duplicated in different parts, right? So we can see that Fibonacci of 5, for example, is calculated here and here. And if we go more into the tree, we also see more duplication like Fibonacci of 3, for example, getting cal being calculated in different times. So you can see that once the Fibonacci of 3 cal is calculated, all of the other Fibonacci of 3 are the same, basically. So they are like calculating it once, it would be already the optimal solution. And we can see that each of the problems are overlapping with each other, right? So you have uh, Fibonacci of 5 getting overlapped here and Fibonacci of 3, 4, etc. right? So this is a good example of why dynamic programming can be useful to solve this problem. So what you would do in dynamic programming is to catch these solutions, these sub-solutions into a data structure that you can use later to avoid recalculating them. So you, for example, if you are calculating the whole tree, you need to start with Fibonacci of one, right? And if you're starting with this uh, branch here, let's say, it's the first time that you encounter Fibonacci of one. So you will say, okay, so it's not calculated. I will store uh, Fibonacci of one to be one. And then you go to Fibonacci of two and will be Fibonacci of two would be one as well. And then you go to Fibonacci of three and Fibonacci of three will be then be two. And, and then uh, you go to Fibonacci 4, but you already know, like, did I calculate Fibonacci of 2? Yes, I calculated Fibonacci of 2. And then I also calculated Fibonacci of 3, so I can calculate Fibonacci of 4, and so forth, so on. So what you do then is when you go here, for example, Fibonacci of 6, instead of calculating again the whole 3, what you do is, uh, what is Fibonacci of 4? So you will know that Fibonacci of 4 is 3, so you just replace this with 3 you don't need to calculate the whole tree, right? So you save a lot of computation time here instead of doing the whole recursion. So recursion and dynamic programming are very useful tools and you can use them whenever you find the need for it. Some problems might be easier to approach when you are thinking about, about them recursively. Of course, rec recursion also has some impact on the memory. So if you're looking for the most efficient solution or you're trying to optimize a problem that you, work, that you solve uh, using recursion, it's usually better to convert it into an iteratively uh, solution. One of the most easiest, easiest way to do it is by using what is called tail recursion. So basically what tail recursion means is it's a function that where you, you have all your block of code and you do all the computation and at the end you call uh, your recursive function and you don't do anything else uh, after that. And many languages are able to even optimize tail recursions into iteratively uh, at runtime. But you can convert, once you have a tail recursion, it's uh, more easy to convert it into an iterative solution, iteratively solution. So that's it about recursion and dynamic programming. And if you want me to explain a little bit more or have more examples, just uh, don't forget to comment there. 
I also put some links in the description. And of course, if you like the video, just don't forget to like it, subscribe, share it with your friends. And that's it. Thank you for watching. See you next time.